Hello and happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to Greece Public Library's Book Break. I am Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here. I moderate the Pints and Prose Book Discussion Group, and I am joined, as always, by my colleague Claire. Yes, today I'm a leprechaun. I don't know how long my hat will stay on, but I do the Historical Book Club on Facebook and as the page turns, so... Yes, and I'm trying not to get distracted by the sight of my Cindy Lou Who dealy boppers. Oh, I love them. I love them. <laughs> I will I should I will, keep them on all day. Yes. All right. We'll see how long I can uh, I can keep it on. Yes. Um, right. So today, you may have guessed by the headgear and the proliferation of green, um, we are taking the opportunity of St. Patrick's Day to talk to you about Irish authors. So all of the books we're gonna be talking about today were written by Irish authors. Um, and I think we're gonna start with one of my favorite Irish authors and an author that I know Claire has read. And we've talked yes. about a few of her books on here, but that is Tana French. Yes. Yay. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll put them um, on my book. So yes, Tana French. I've got the first one in the Dublin murder series here, mm -hmm. which I know you've read. Yes. Um, this is actually, whoops, as I throw books around. This one is, I want to say, book three in that series. So um, the Dublin Murder Squad series is kind of interesting. It's very much as it sounds. So they're police procedurals. Um, set roughly contemporaneously. Um, but the interesting thing is that each book, so each book has a point of view character. And then the next book is not the same point of view character, but it's a character who was like in the periphery of, of the, the first, last book. Yeah, of the previous right? story. Yeah. yeah. So the first book, there's um, uh, uh, two detectives who are partners and one is the point of view for the whole first book. And then the second book is the point of view of the second detective. So they are not so much like a chronological series as they are just kind of interlinked. Right. Does that seem fair? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it actually. So the one frustration I have, and I know Kirster has too, is, um, in the first one, In the Woods, there's actually two mysteries. One that mm -hmm. happens when the detective, Rob, is it? Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I read this, but- Yeah, I think that's right. There was a disappearance, like he had a traumatic experience in the woods, um, a disappearance. And then they are investigating another crime, similar area mm -hmm. uh, in modern day times. So, mm -hmm. and you yeah. don't, oh, should I say? Should well, I say? Yeah. I mean- the book's been out for... Yeah, you never really find out what happens in the disappearance in his time, which drove me crazy. <laughs> I know, and it it never comes back through yeah. the whole series. So that one mystery just stays an unresolved mystery. So if you have a low tolerance for unresolved plot threads, beware. <laughs> um, but I really like Tana French. I like her characterization. Um, her books can be a slow burn yeah. and some of them more than others um and of the the dublin murder squad books there are some that i liked better than others mm -hmm. or at least that i thought moved faster um this one faithful place was one of my favorites so okay. for what that's worth and you don't really need to read them in order there are some references back and forth but not enough to keep you from just picking one up in the middle. So, yay, ton yeah. of French. Ton of French. All right. Hmm? So, should we start on to the books that we've read? Sure. All right. I'll jump into my first one since we're kind of on that mystery type of thing. Mm -hmm. This one is called Lying in Wait by Liz Nugent. And this, this one, if you like a psychological thriller with kind of a crazy protagonist, I would highly recommend <laughs> this one. Um, <laughs> it's the story of Lydia Fitzsimmons, who seems to have it all in the beginning. She, her husband is a judge in Ireland, and um, she's got one son named Lawrence. Uh, they have a beautiful manor house. Um, 
and unfortunately her husband kills a young woman that was trying to blackmail him so that's where the whole thing starts taking oh unfortunately yeah just (laughs) just bang right in the first chapter you know um so we have the story of how this has starting to affect the family and then you learn more and more about um mom so and she she really has a lot of issues so as the book goes on you learn more and more about her past what is making her be the way she is now the relationship the very scary relationship she has with her son um so yeah i don't want to give away too many things but it is very much a page turner uh if you love that kind of quick psychological thriller mystery i would highly recommend this book and i just saw that she's got another one out which i may have to go go and find but hmm. lying in wait so nice um i don't have a mystery so i'm not going to talk about one i'm going to talk about a historical fiction instead oh well i like um, those so <laughs> so mine is the wonder by emma donahue um emma donahue was also the author of room uh that got made into the movie with brie larson um she also wrote Akin, which I read, I think, over the summer this past year and didn't love. Um, I actually liked The Wonder much better. So this one is set in Ireland. Um, I don't know the exact date, but it features um, a nurse who trained under Florence Nightingale. So that can dial you in a little bit towards the time frame. Um, and she has been called to this remote Um, Irish village where there is a child uh, who is miraculous and the the miracle is that she has stopped eating but she is not starving so she seems to be subsisting without any kind of food Um, so the her parents and like the parish priest think that this is a miracle and um, the town elders are like well we need to maybe like investigate this a little bit So the nurse is sent to um, both take care of the young girl, but also to kind of keep an eye on things and make sure nothing untoward is happening. So um, it's a very interesting book. It's mostly told from the point of view of the nurse um, who has backstory that kind of slowly unspools through the book. Um, And we don't know the answer to what is really happening until the very end of the book. So she does keep you in suspense and it is suspenseful um, for that whole book, but it's um, it's historical fiction. It's part family drama because um, there's a lot of stuff going on with the girl and her family that mm-hmm. kind of starts to unspool through the book. Um, and there's there's some, I, I don't want to give anything at all away because I feel like that's going to spoil it. Um, but it was a very engrossing read. Um, and I feel like it would actually be a really good book club book because there's a lot. To I was about. just thinking that. I was like, hmm. I, I, bet, I bet your group would go for this one, Claire. Mine yeah. didn't really, but yeah. I bet yours would. All right. I'm putting it on the list. Remind me when we get back to the desk. Absolutely. Okay, so the next one is also one that I I read long ago. Um, A little backstory, my father, his mom emigrated from Ireland. She came through Ellis Island, Mary Mary McHale. So I was very interested in this book when it first came out because uh, I met some of my father's relatives. Um, Hidden fact about Claire, I was an Irish folk dancer. uh, Back in my younger days, yes. So I connected with a lot of his family when I went to the Cayleys in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, so this book, the the one thing that it, it's an odd book because Angela's Ashes, it, it's both funny, but also tragic and very depressing. Mm-hmm. But that's typical Irish, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you learn about uh, Frank McCourt. He he was born here, I believe, in New York. Uh, his mom and dad emigrated. Father was an alcoholic, went back to Limerick um, to try to get some help because things were not going well here on mm-hmm. this side of the pond. And um, 
you know, there are children that are lost, uh, but he and his brother get into all kinds of trouble, <laughs> you know, stealing into orchards. Um, very, if you went to Catholic school, which I did, you'll find a lot to relate to here with the Catholic school stories, the, the whole Catholic guilt complex, you know, growing up, um, his tragic mother. Uh, and I didn't realize that in Limerick, he, he said that the rain, <laughs> the rain was like constant, you know, mm. the, the wetness, it brought a mm -hmm. lot of consumption, it brought a lot of, you know, colds, diseases, sickness, um, which I didn't know about. So um, Angela's at, it also won the Pulitzer Prize, because I think we have prize winners on our list. Um, yes, we do. So yeah, and you were telling me that his brother also yes. wrote books. Malachi? Yeah, uh, Malachi McCourt um, okay. is one of my husband's favorite authors. Um, so he also wrote uh, nonfiction or writes, I, he might still be writing. He is, God, a million years old. <laughs> but um, yeah, and we have at least a couple of his books in the collection. Okay, yeah. And um, Frank's memoir goes on to series like because he mm -hmm. comes back and is eventually in a teacher in the United States. So if you enjoy one and you enjoy his writing style, you can keep going. Um, mm -hmm. So for those of you that like a good different memoir um, and maybe didn't read it the first time around, I, I would suggest, because this is very, very Irish, so. Nice. Yeah. And specifically like the Irish immigrant experience too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, my next one is one that we did talk about in Pints and Prose, and that is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Um, Sally Rooney is like the up and coming young modern Irish author. She has another book out called Conversations with Friends. I haven't read that one, mm -hmm. um, but it was very popular when it came out. It got a lot of, um, a lot of good reviews. Um, this one is interesting, and again, there was a lot to talk about in our book discussion, um, but it is largely about um, two kids. So there's Connell and Marianne. Um, Marianne has uh, grown up in a wealthy household. Um, Connell's mother is actually the cleaner for her family. Um, and Connell is super popular in school, Marianne is not. So at school, they basically like don't have anything to do with each other, but out of school, they develop a friendship and eventually a relationship. And then we follow the two of them um, through the rest of high school and then through university and starting to go beyond university. And it's really a character study of these two young people and how they keep reconnecting and falling away from each other. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a very well-written book. Um, the one thing that our group did kind of universally have some um, frustration with is that Sally Rooney doesn't believe in quotation marks. Oh. So <laughs> it can be um, hard a little bit hard while you're reading to figure out what is dialogue and what is like internal thought. Um, so there were certainly times, especially at the beginning when you're kind of getting used to her style where I would have to go back and reread a paragraph a couple of times thought, wait a minute, who's talking? Is that actually being said? Um, so there's that, but um, it is a, a really lovely character study of these two um, kind of damaged kids and mm -hmm. how they help each other and how they hurt each other. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I forgot, you know, one of the things I wanted to say about this, so I'm jumping back for a yeah, second. Do it. Do I'm it. allowed to do that. Um, yeah. Is, is a quote. <laughs> yeah. When I look back on my childhood, I wonder how I managed to survive it all. It was, of course, a miserable childhood. The happy childhood is hardly worth your while. Worse than the ordinary miserable childhood is the miserable Irish childhood. <laughs> and worse yet is the miserable Irish Catholic childhood. <laughs> so that, that, that kind of summarizes it right sets there. Sets the tone. Yes, sets yeah. the tone. Um, 
So my next one is this is something very different for me because as as we all know, I'm not like a, a romance reader at all. Mm -hmm. But um, this is War by Cecilia mm. Ahern. And she wrote, oh gosh, what's the one that's most popular by her? Oh well. P.S. I love you. Okay. Uh, and I think that yes, was, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, made into this a, a film. movie with Hillary Swank and Gerard Butler. Yeah. Um, but War is actually you know, as a heads up, it's going to be made into a, I think it's an Apple Plus TV series. Mm. Um, Nicole Kidman is involved, but this is 30, um, 30 short stories. Hmm. So, and I think we have short stories or essays on our, our list. So this could check sure another do. box if you're doing it. Um, but they're all about women and it's more of a feminist bent, um, all kinds of women in the world today and often how they are portrayed and how they come to rise above their struggles. So there's a lot of, there's some magical realism hmm. in, in the book. Um, like one story in particular, a woman was eating photographs to try and she became addicted to that. So, you know, hmm. you can't really eat photographs, but it was almost like she was <laughs> concentrating so much on her past that she couldn't mm -hmm. move forward in her future. Um, there's other ones like the woman that was put on the shelf, uh, whose husband really wanted, you know, that trophy wife. And then she finds that as she's put there and admired by all that she really is left out of the living mm -hmm. of the life. Um, so there's all different, you know, you'll recognize a lot of women in here. Some people, like when I read on Goodreads, some of the reviews, some people said it was too trite, you know, that, that the characterizations mm -hmm. were too, um, just too gen, you know, generalized or stereotypical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but there's another woman that uh, meets a duck who talks to her, <laughs> which of course I like that one. Um, of course. And ends up, you know, it's almost like advice from a grandparent mm -hmm. who used to take her there. So it's, it's nice to me. I find short stories is nice when I pick them up, put them down. Like I can't mm -hmm. really sit and usually blast through a whole book of yeah. short stories. But if you have little chunks of time, I would suggest this book, um, particularly good for March, you know, International Women's Month, because mm -hmm. it's basically, you know, all women, all women's stories, so. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I actually forgot to mention, speaking of Apple Plus series, um, Normal People is now a series on Hulu, Ooh. I believe. And the Dublin Murder Squad, they made a series on stars, I believe. So this so angers the, me because one I of the networks have... I don't have. I know, I know. <laughs> oh. um, so my last one I have actually talked about before, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. Um, but it is my nonfiction, which is Say Nothing, uh, a true story of murder and memory in Northern Ireland. So this one, Patrick Radden Keefe, he is American of Irish descent. He's a journalist. Um, but this is a book about the troubles in Northern Ireland and specifically about um, people being disappeared by the IRA, mostly by the IRA. Um, so it is just fascinating. Um, it's very, very sad, um, but it gives it gave me a much better understanding of the troubles than I had previously had. Um, and my last plug for this one is, um, if you can listen to this one, um, the narrator for the audiobook is from Northern Ireland and has a Northern Irish accent. And it just brings an extra little zing to the experience, having all of the names and everything in that very distinctive Northern Irish accent. So mm -hmm. nonfiction, say nothing. Um, this one could also work for the challenge for the nonfiction you know nothing about if you're not oh, yeah. familiar with the troubles. Definitely. So I have a few just to, to bring up too that I have not read, but I wanted to point out we're in the collection. Mm -hmm. um, I've got two YA picks because we have YA uh, to, to do a young adult or teen. One is called The Wren Hunt, mm -hmm. which fascinates me. Just I probably I bought that this cover. For the, I know. I probably bought it for the cover. So guilty. 
And the other one is One by Sarah Croson, who I have a couple of her books. This one is a novel of verse about co-joined twins. And it got a lot of buzz a couple of years ago. Um, and I thought that was kind of a beautiful cover as well. Yeah. I so, agree. yeah. So those, there's are two. The Renhan, I, I might actually keep this and read it. So don't try to check it out. <laughs> And don't put it on hold so Claire can't renew it. I know, I know. Just kidding. But, but um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll give it up if, if need be. Because, uh, <laughs> we all know about my stack of shame, which mm -hmm. we'll get to soon. Yes, we um, will. Yeah, but those are two. And then I'll wait. I'll let you talk about some. And then I'll talk about one more that okay. I started that's available yeah. on Hulu. Yeah, I... Um, Not Hulu. Hoopla. Hoopla. There you <laughs> go. Um, I, so... I also grabbed just a little stack of books by Irish authors that I haven't read, but that we had here in the collection that are probably worth mentioning. Um, first one is Brooklyn by Calm Toybin. Um, I have no idea if that's actually how you pronounce his last name, but here we are. Uh, this one was a movie with Saoirse Ronan a few years ago. Um, I don't remember whether it won Best Picture, but it was certainly nominated. Um, I saw the movie, I loved it. Um, so this is about um, a young Irish girl emigrating to the United States after World War II. Um, so there's that one. Uh, Milkman by Anna Burns is another um, modern Irish author. Um, and this one is um, set in Northern Ireland, I believe, during the Troubles. Um, I think that one's an independent publisher, too. I believe you are right. Yes, Grey Wolf Press. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, John Connolly, we have many of his books in the collection. He is an Irish author, lives in Dublin. Um, this one is The Gates. It's the first in a series. Um, and this one has some uh, supernatural elements to it, I believe. Although he also has, I think, a more just sort of straight detective mystery series as well. Um, and then who could forget Maeve Binchy? Um, I've actually never read any of her books, though I have seen several of the ones that were made into movies. Um, but we have, you know, a bunch of her books in the collection as well. So she I've, was, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I've read, I've read her, but it was so long ago. Mm. I, I didn't feel I could really talk to them today. Yeah. But. Um, and I mean, she was really prolific and mostly writing in like the 80s and 90s, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Well, this one came out in 2015, but it looks like it might have been published posthumously. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the That's other one I was going to talk about a little bit, I started listening to it, but I haven't mm -hmm. gotten too far. It's Big Girl in a Small Town. It was um, on Hoopla as both an ebook and an audiobook. And nice. that's how I started listening. This one also has an Irish narrator. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what part, you know, the dialect is from where the accent is from, but it is about a young woman with, um... okay, I can't think today. <laughs> Not maybe Asperger's, but more, Okay. you know, um, she starts like a lot, she does like a lot of lists mm -hmm. and it's also set earlier, but not, I'm trying to think what time it is. More like the eighties, 1980s. Okay. Cause she, she binge watches um, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, so this one got a lot of buzz it was the hoopla book club book like a okay. month ago um so you know if you want something new and you want to either listen or you'll have access to hoopla you might want to jump into this one because it's another new more modern irish author michelle galen so nice there we go very cool um, so that's what we've got. We would love to hear if there are authors that we've missed. I mean, we certainly didn't talk about like the classic classics. You've got your James Joyce's and your Oscar Wilde's. We didn't really get into that. Um, but let us know if you have a favorite author or a favorite book set in Ireland or about Ireland. Um, I'm really hoping that um, I get to go to Ireland again. I visited about eight years ago and would have stayed forever <laughs> if I had been allowed. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I went a lot longer, about a year or two after I got out of college. I did three mm. weeks in England, Ireland, and Scotland, mm. so, and Wales. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. One day. One day indeed. Um, so, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, 
pick up an Irish book, pick up a Guinness, and or enjoy the evening. Or Smittix, absolutely. Yeah. Can't forget the Smittix. Um, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.